see them words. <laughs> but praise God, they're reading glasses. I don't need nothing out there. I've got to have it right here. But uh, tell Donnie I got some new ones. He might want to get him some. You can tell him go go up them. They'll do it. Uh, that guy's really nice at waiting on me. Uh, uh, my doctor asked me, said, Rick, have you, when's the last time you've been to the eye doctor? And I said, it's been a year or two. And she said, I'm setting you up. So he can tell his doctor and they'll set him up uh, on it. But let's look right here and see. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Psalms 119. Uh, 13. I'm going to get through the scriptures pretty quick, and I want to get into some of the ingredients that's in love, y'all. It ain't just L-O-V-E. One great love that uh, we all need to strive for, and that's agape love. Who has that agape love? God Almighty. he got love we can't imagine. He loved us even he died on the tree. Did y'all know that? Let's see what it says in Psalms 119, 113. It says, we're supposed to love the Word, and I do. I love the Word. I hate vain thoughts, but the law do I love. Y'all see that? We're supposed to love the word of God. And so we'll start out right there. Now, let's go right down here uh, in uh, Matthew 22, 37, and 39. This is the, the first great commandment. Look right here. It said, Jesus said unto them, you know, the disciples was talking to Jesus, and they would ask him some stuff. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's a bottom line, ain't it? All ye heart. And he mentioned uh, mind. All ye mind. And with what? All ye soul. Y'all see that? If you love him with your heart, mind, and soul, you love him, don't you? And that's what God said to do. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's how much he loves us, too, y'all. Think about it. Look right here. This is the first and great commandment. So we're supposed to do that. Our faith and belief is based on what? Love, isn't it? And the second is like to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, that's a pretty hard one sometimes, ain't it? We all had our issues with our loved ones and our neighbors and all kind of stuff that, man, I don't like that dude. I don't like him at all. And. He don't like me, and you know what I mean? <clears throat> That's what's the matter with the world today. I want to rule that country. I hate them people over there, and I don't like them people over there, and I'm going to be the big cheese. That's what's the matter with the world today, ain't it? Love. We're supposed to love. The second is like a new, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If all the nations of the world would love each other, man, we'd be in a better place. If all the people in the United States would love each other like they're supposed to, we'd be in a better place. If all the people uh, in our community would love each other like we're supposed to, we'd be in a better place, y'all. We wouldn't be fighting and shooting every morning. Every morning you get up and look at the, I just want to look at the weather, and they two or three shootings you got to go through before you see the weather. I mean, think about it. It's aggravating, ain't it? It's terrible. That's kind of world we're living in like noel's day we in it it's already started it's like noel's day me and uh, becky was watching a movie the other day we got this fire stick man we can pull up archaeological finds in israel and we can pull up uh, uh certain movies and stuff we pulled up this movie and, and uh, christian movies and stuff you know and this movie it said uh, noel's day has already started and man we looked at that thing and they showed a bunch of catastrophe matter of fact jeanette's going to be doing the uh not this Wednesday night, but the next Wednesday night. She's going to be doing that one, too, because me and Becky, we're going to try to, uh, anyway, uh, get away for a few days because our little little bit bit's gone into doggy world, and so we got freedom now. But anyway, I want to tell you this. Uh, we seen that movie and watched it, and they showed all of these catastrophes that's happened uh, in the world in the last six months or a year or so, and they some super catastrophes catastrophic ca catastrophes that's happened around the world floods hurricanes volcanoes did you know one volcano can mess the whole world up you get a good volcano with a lot of that ash and that ash block out the sun and jets can't fly through that ash and, and it blocks out sun you can't grow vegetables did you know that there's a lot in that and then if you have a volcano under the ocean, it can cause a tsunami and it can bust out some places and tear them places up. And then you got rain and floods, and then you got fires out in California and all that stuff. So 
<clears throat> a lot of stuff going on in the world and hurricanes we're having hurricanes bigger and worse than we ever have before you know and so wake up people i'm like that movie it said no day is done started and these people went through all that and then they went to some of these people that was in the catastrophes of those uh catastrophic uh things and they had testimonies of people how god saved them when they prayed and how god protected them that's pretty good Y'all might enjoy that. I'll, I'll, if uh, I might run it by Jenny, if she don't do it, maybe we'll do it one night or something. But it, certain movies really jump out there and grab you, don't they? <clears throat> and it glorifies God. I like them. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, the second unto it, thou shalt love the Lord thy God uh, as thyself, as Roy used to say. Mm -hmm. I love myself, don't you? That's the way Roy used to do it. Mm, you wonderful thing. You. <laughs> he, he done a good job on that, didn't he? But, hey, we do love ourselves, don't we? So we're supposed to love our neighbors as thyself, y'all. Think about it. So let's go and, uh, and, and look up here. You don't believe it? Who, who, who gets out before you go somewhere and goes in that mirror in there and combs that hair? Slicks it back, does what you got to do, stand in a little while and check it out. You want to look right when you leave your house, don't you? Every now and then you go in that mirror. I can't. I can go in that mirror and I can pull that mirror out and I can look up and say, ooh. <laughs> Reality hurts sometimes, Robert. <laughs> Let's look right here. It says right here, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love the Lord thy God uh, as thyself. Now let's go a little bit further and uh, look in John. No, let's look in, in uh, Psalms 40, 16. Something else you're supposed to love. God has given you and I salvation, okay? And he loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus, the greatest gift of mankind, joy to the world right here. And all these that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually the Lord be magnified. We're supposed to love our salvation. Boy, I do, don't you? I was not worthy to be saved, but because of his mercy and grace, praise God, we got salvation through the Lord, and we're supposed to love our salvation. And salvation, by the way, is like this word love. There's a lot more in that salvation. You can preach on the benefits and stuff that salvation has. Let's go in John 13. It talks about we're supposed to love one another again. And this is my commandment that you love one another. I've loved you. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians. We'll read about that. Paul said, now this is a good one right here, y'all. You know, you can get out here and speak in tongues and think you've got the gifts and do all those things. And if you ain't got love, it says tingling brass. Now that's heavy, ain't it? Oh, look at me. I got all this. I'm telling you. You ain't got love. You come in here bitter and ain't got that love. You know, I ask the Lord sometimes. I have to preach certain messages. Lord, let me preach it with not a, let me preach it with love. And then sometimes he'll may want me to preach it. You know, he's in control, amen. But look right here and let's see what Paul, our brother, said. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am becoming as sound and brass or tingling cymbal. Y'all see that? That's pretty heavy, ain't it? Right here. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I could remove mountains and have not charity. Look up the word charity. It means love. I am nothing. Do y'all see that? That's pretty heavy, ain't it? In other words, if you got all these gifts and you think you're the big cheese, if you ain't got love, you ain't the big cheese. Jesus is the big guy. Amen. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes we in our um, daily walk with the, uh, the world and everything out there, sometimes we do get hard, don't we? I remember a buddy used to be in our ministry, old Bob, he would say, you know, Rick, I have to pray that Jesus would give me the love he had because I get hard sometimes. We do that sometimes, don't we? So we got to take inventory of ourselves. Lord, am I doing this right? Is this the, the love that you want me to show right here? Let's go a little bit further right here. 
And though I bestow all my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. That's pretty heavy, ain't it? You go out there and do all these good, goody two shoes things and everything. You ain't got love doing it. If you're doing it for the wrong reason, it ain't doing you no good, is it? Y'all see that? That's right point blank. Uh, there with us. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It, it, it is not puffed up. We're going to go over some of these. Doeth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not uh, her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh not evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. I like that right there. Rejoice, you know, people out there, if they sin and doing things wrong, you got to stand by the truth, y'all, whatever is going on. Look right here. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. What are we talking about here? Charity, love. Uh, charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But I'm telling you right here, love stands. I think, I, uh, oh yeah, verse 13, I, I think I forgot that one. I did, verse 13 talked about, you know, you got all these things, but if you got love, that's where you want. That's verse 13, if y'all taking notes, I didn't, I forgot to put that one in there, but I got it here. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Anybody got your Bible? Read that for me. Or Ronnie? Ronnie probably have it up there. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Or anybody got it? Read it out loud, Joanne. That's it. I forgot to. Thank you, Ronnie. We got it. But y'all see that? The greatest of those is charity. Praise God. Praise God. Now look at this other one. Now we just talked about in Corinthians. Let's go down here in Corinthians. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go down here in Corinthians and talk about some of those things we just read, okay? Let's go a little deeper in, uh, in love right here. What did it say? It said patience in Corinthians. What is patience? Patience endures all things, doesn't it? Y'all hear that? That's hard sometimes, ain't it? Be patient. You at the McDonald's joint, you want that hamburger, hamburger right then. Sometimes you got to be patient. And you got to endure all things before you, 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 and God teaches us patience and stuff. Now let's go a little bit further and look at another thing. We looked at patience. This is ingredients of divine love, y'all. What about kindness? Are we supposed to be kind? Are we supposed to be kind one to another? Yes, we are. We all have feelings and stuff, and we're supposed to be kind. I was leaving today, going, driving out. I was tired and ready to go. Be on family was here. Marquita Richard was sitting there. This dude comes pulling up in the U-Haul, and he had destroyed his life, and he wanted us to put it back together for him. You see him here tonight, y'all. And the Lord blessed. We gave him some money. We didn't want him to be hungry. Sometimes I don't do that but sometimes I do if it's cold I, I, I like to give them opportunity to get food and we did didn't we Richard Marquita and me and uh, and BR was out there BR went in there and got some food that you can pop the can because he's whining another church and I got to thinking another church so he's dealing with the churches so another church went and gave him some food he said but it, you could you had to cook it and I didn't have no way to cook it and then he had a U-Haul and he showed me he said like, froze to death last night and he had a U-Haul, and he opened it up and said, I, he had a real nice bed in there and uh, with blankets and everything. He was dressed real nice. He was from New Jersey, and he lived around here. His mother and him lived around here, and they wouldn't let him in. But anyway, he was down on his luck, and he was, you know, he wanted prayer. He really wanted prayer, and he, he got to tell us all this stuff, you know. all these. I've heard this story time, and, and I told him, get in line. There's 10 behind you that need help worse than you do. I said, you're dressed in nice clothes and you got a bed there. And these guys, we, and when, when you're talking, we're talking about is living under a concrete bridge over here. I said, now we try to help you a little bit, but we can't, you know, you put yourself 
in the position because she backslid on God and you're going to suffer the consequence for that. He said, you know, my mama told me that. I told him the truth. <clears throat> you know, and, uh, and I told him, I said, you better go straight to Salvation Army. You won't get a bed. And it's going to be cold tonight if you're tired of sleeping in it. He had to turn it in, said he owed a bunch of money on it. So, <clears throat> But here, where's he at tonight? Anyway, we did what we're supposed to do. We did it with an open heart, and we did it with a heart of love, didn't we? We did it with a heart of love, and God knows that, so God's going to handle that, amen? And, uh, but you got it all the time, and like I've told him, uh, you know, I said, you know, uh, man, I learned this in Dominican years ago. I gave a, a little Dominican kid out there on the street one peso. I thought I was doing something good. I turned around. There were 10 kids back there wanting a peso, and God told me, he said, the poor is always going to be there. So just like this guy told me, you know, those, those people. I said, you ain't in Ukraine. It could be worse. I told him that. <laughs> Becky said, you didn't tell him that, do you? I said, I told him that. Sometimes people is in situations they have to face reality, you know, and knowing that they got their self there. I said, if you was going to be in this position this day, why didn't you think about it a week ago? I mean, I'm just from experience God's showing me things you know anyway but we did the right thing we 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 prayed for him and he appreciated the prayer I could tell it the prayer helped I mean I could tell he wanted to pray he did want prayer he come up back in tears and he, he said is there a preacher here can somebody pr pray for me and so we did huh what do you say the U-Haul well he's coming he's a hour late I told him six o'clock <clears throat> so well I hope he comes in here but we're not giving him nothing else church y'all hear me but I hope he comes I will pray for him we'll pray for him and uh but anyway let's go a little bit further right here and look patient endureth all things kindness what is kindness Love in action. Amen. Y'all hear that? Love in action. And uh, what is uh, generosity? Not envious or jealous. Because somebody that's got a prettier bass boat or truck than you, you ain't supposed to be envious or jealous of that. You're supposed to, you know, when you become a Christian, you glad and happy for that person. You know it? That's right. When you become a Christian, you're, you're not uh, your generosity. You you happy for them? I'm, I, I hope everybody here becomes a millionaire and gets blessed. Wouldn't bother me at all. Tickle me to death because I know everybody in here's got a good heart, and you've been giving and, and sharing and doing what God wants you to do. You see, you're in a position now that you can manage your money the way God wants you to. Maybe 20 years ago you couldn't, but now you can, because God grew us spiritually. See to see where we at. And uh, you, you see that? And so humility. And uh, keep an eye on him, Ronnie, you know. Look here. Humility. Love uh, in hiding. Uh, not prating around. You know what I mean? Humility. Humble. Humble. God loves a humble person. Man, he'll take a humble person. And, man, he'd use them more than he would a prideful. He don't like pride at all, y'all. He does not like pride, I'll tell you that. If you got pride, he's, he's a God can knock it out of you real quick. So you better humble yourself down, amen. The best thing I can tell you is humble yourself down. <coughs> yes, Lord. These are some of the things that's in, uh, we've seen it in Corinthians here. We were looking at, it's getting a little deeper, ingredients of divine love. Look at here. Courtesy. Love in society. Somebody needs help or you need to talk to them or, or give them a kind word. Polite, not rude. We're supposed to uh, have that courtesy as a Christian. You see that? We're supposed to be as a Christian and we're supposed to have that uh, uh, polite and not rude courtesy to the people that we run into in the grocery store, wherever we at. Uh, so, you know, you get in conversation and... Like me and Paul's talking today, Ronnie never met a, uh, uh, never met a stranger. He didn't. She said he's all the time talking to people about the Lord all the time. She said that. That everywhere we go, he'd be talking to somebody about the Lord. Man, that's awesome. 
Think about that, y'all. And unselfishness. Oh, that's a good one right there. You know, when you get saved, boy, you that old selfishness goes away, don't it? It does. Listen to this. Unselfishness seeks good of others and not vengeful or bitter of others. Amen? So we're supposed to be unselfish and help people and do things that, uh, that God would be uh, pleased about. And good temper. Um, uh, you know, never resentful. We can't be resentful of somebody because, you know, they got a pair of pretty black shoes and you don't. Come on. I'm just using that as an example, you know, or they got a pretty coat and you don't. Or they got a big, nice, brand new four-wheel drive and me and Richard don't. You can't be uh, resentful of that. And I'm just saying we're supposed to be good-tempered in that area, you know. And that goes a little deeper into it. Now, here's a real good one right here, the last one. That, uh, no, no, I got two more. This one right here, righteousness, right standing before the Lord. You're supposed to hate sin, too. Did you know that? I do. I get, I'm going to tell you something. When I get around it, sometimes it makes me angry. Anger rises up in me. I get mad. You're supposed to hate sin. You're supposed to be, and you're supposed to be slow to ex expose somebody that's getting into stuff. you got to make sure that you're sure. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you're never glad when others go wrong. You don't say, ah, look at that. I'm glad that, you know, you're doing this. You don't want to. You don't want to do that. You want to pray, God. I pray you'll bless them and help them, God. But you know, if they go wrong, they put their own self in that position, y'all. You see. And uh, but we don't. We don't want to say, hey, hey, hey. You know, look what you've done. But you know, that's like that guy told him uh, today. I, I said, you know, you. I wasn't doing it in a boastful and a and a, uh, uh, and a a temperate way. I was just telling him. You put yourself in that position because of the lifestyle you chose to go back from God to there, and now you've got to get back. With, if you sincerely want to get back with God, He will help you. But if you don't, you know, I told him the truth. You know what I mean? And uh, righteousness, we're talking about. Uh, you know, never glad when others go wrong. Always eager, and I, and and I've always been this way. Unless somebody uh, does me wrong, uh, and I know it. You know, listen to this. You're supposed to always be eager to believe the best for somebody. Always. Give them opportunity. Give them a chance. Be hopeful for them. You see what I mean? Try to try to be hopeful and give them the opportunity to for the best to come out in them. Amen? Look at us. And sincerity. This is a good one right here. I really like this one. Always honest. Always be honest before the Lord. And, um, and be honest and always what is strictly true or the truth, okay? Ever what the truth is, what you got to stand by. You don't stand by if there's a wrong there or whatever. you got to stand by truth, what's right and what's just and what is full of truth, amen? Trust, full of trust. You're supposed to trust, uh, you know, and you're supposed to be joyful. Everybody see that? So there's a lot of ingredients here. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I want to I want to give a fine example before I close here of someone that's uh, involved in uh, loving us more than we love them. Y'all might recognize this. Y'all recognize that? He loves us more than we love him. Do you know that? Do you know that? That's awesome. For God so loved the world that he gave. You and I, as God deals with us, we become more givers and than ever before. And he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave and he did something for us. Amen. And we serve. That's the God we serve, y'all. That is the God that we serve. Praise God. So we give him praise and we give him glory. Uh, I'm going to pray I think I'm speaking to the church tonight and I'm going to pray and I, I want y'all to agree with me that God will give each one of us here tonight divine love amen I want divine love don't you I, I want to I want people to see that love on me and want what I got amen I want people to see Jesus on me divine love and when they see that and we 
and we act in that divine love, that's what draws people to the cross. Did you know that? That's what does it. That divine love. We're going to pray here uh, in just a minute. Because God is an awesome God, and we love him so much. Uh, let's everybody just bow your head. Talk to the folks on the Internet. Thank you for being with us. And, and uh, God, we just give you praise, and we give you glory, God. And God, give us that divine love that we need, God, in Jesus' name. Divine love that we need that comes from you, Lord. I pray you bless everybody here tonight with that divine love in their heart, mind, and soul, God. And it's just to consume them. And, God, I pray in the name of Jesus uh, as we go forth out these doors tonight that it will, we can let it run over on other people, God. And other people will grab a hold of it too, God. And other people will want the love that, of Jesus that we have, and we can lead them to the Lord, Lord. I pray for the divine love, and I pray blessings. I speak blessings on everybody represented here tonight. And I pray protection. I apply the blood over everybody in the holy name of Jesus. Everybody said, everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. And uh, uh, Robert, I want to talk to you just a minute. And Ronnie, I need to see you uh, uh, just a minute too. Everybody is dismissed. Y'all be kind of watch yourself going out. We're going to look at that situation, see what's going on there. Everything's good. <laughs>